Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Dead Talk Live. Today, we have a very special guest in Thora Birch. Thora, thank you for being here. Thora is going to be the lead in the upcoming podcast called Overleaper, which we are going to get into depth about in a few minutes. But Thora, thank you again. How are you doing today? Thank you, and thank you for having me. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk to you. So let's get right to it. I'm going to give the audience a little synopsis of what Overleaper is. Overleaper is a podcast produced by Realm. It is premiering Thursday, March 5th. That's this Thursday. It's an espionage thriller. And here's a little brief synopsis. Overleaper centers on Special Forces Staff Sergeant Audrey Beach. That's played by Thora, a determined career soldier rising through the ranks to the cream of the military crop. Uh, Realm was nice enough to share the first episode with me. I listened to it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Before we get into uh, Overleaper, uh, let's talk about podcasts uh, for a second. Podcasts have been around for a very long time now, but over the last several years, Hollywood has taken uh, a keen interest in podcasts. They finally see the value in podcasts being a real entertainment outlet. Uh, so share with us your thoughts on podcasts from the to the evolution to what they are now and being part of Hollywood's portfolio. Well, um, excellent, excellent point. You know, I... Uh... In the last uh, several years or so, it, it, it seems like the focus has, has in, in the podcast realm has moved away from kind of like just simply only the true crime or documentary series podcasts or, uh, you know, the, the, the fictionalized podcast has really, has really taken off. And I think uh, it's like a wonderful opportunity um, to, to remain a continuing space one thing i love about the entire concept of it it just harkens back to like the old radio yeah. sagas that 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 was kind of the only entertainment a lot of people had mm -hmm. um uh you know back then and so to kind of reapproach that style of storytelling in this new technological world that we're all in is is exciting and um and, and there's, there's just so much opportunity for a wide variety of stories and genres to be explored in, in this forum and as as a performer it's it's freeing and challenging it's freeing in the sense that you're not physically on a set or necessarily training to uh, portray somebody who had, is a special ops staff sergeant but it, at the same time there is a physicality to it as well especially with something as jam-packed action-wise as this so it, there's just there's so many great opportunities but but seeing the way realm is kind of tackling Cert, uh, like a, a combination of genres um, with the material that they're a, a approaching is, I feel like, definitely in the, the area that we're, we're all headed. Oh, yeah. And again, you know, after a podcast, people want to see it, you know, they and, and so you can start off as a podcast and wind up being who knows what. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I have spoken to plenty of actors who've done voice work. And uh, a lot of them say that voice over acting, this is not really voice over acting, it's voice acting, is more challenging than being in front of a camera because you're limited to just your voice, your expression, your tone to tell a story. Do you agree with that? I agree. It's challenging, but it's also an opportunity. Uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, you, you're, you're collaborating with your with your tech and your, your directors and you, you're working off of a script and in this case was already incredibly well done as far as um painting a picture for me to to kind of try to bring about vocally um so it is challenging but again it's another opportunity for you to really put your own stamp on it and really kind of create what you want your character to be feeling like looking like and what you think you know who you're reacting to and, and as far as the other vocal performers who aren't in that booth with you yeah uh, so it's it's from that point of view i don't know if it's as you know more difficult than let's say being an actor on set where your set is just a green room 
uh, yeah, that's pretty bad too. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of close, you know. Now, Audrey in the story not only does the acting and interaction with the other characters in the podcast, but you also narrate the story in between those takes. Uh, was that something completely new for you? You've never done it. And what do you think of that concept? Well, uh, thank you for that also, because I, I, you know, there are, it, I've been saying it's a dual role. I play Audrey and then I also play a version of Audrey, which is the Overleaver. But in between that, there are two other characters. There is Audrey as a narrator, and then there is the Overleaper mm -hmm. as a narrator. So trying to navigate between those differentiations of when the Overleaper is just the Overleaper in her real time mm -hmm. versus how she's telling this story, um, that it was, you know, that was something that we had to isolate and separate and, and, and kind of do in one bulk um, after tackling Audrey and I wanted to start with Audrey first because that to me was the real Audrey now when it comes to character development uh did the did you go through the same kind of uh preparation uh, as a you know like Gamma Mary on The Walking Dead is it, is it the same kind of preparation that you put into Audrey as doing a tv show it's, it's hard to say. I mean, there's a certain amount of dedication that is the same as far as preparation. You don't, you're not really afforded a lot of time, or at least in this instance on, on, on the Overleaper, I wasn't really afforded a lot of um, prep time. You know, I, I, I read the script and about a, a week later or a week and a half later, I was in the booth. Yeah. And there's something exciting about being kind of thrust into it and and not given a lot of time to ponder and think about and create and be like is this realistic or is that realistic you kind of just got to go in there and start doing it making yeah. it out i mean i was lucky because like i said this script did a great job of just painting that picture and, and those characters for me so that i was just like oh okay i could kind of like pre-hear it mm -hmm. i mean not that i would be right or anything but you have, that's all i could go on basically. of course of course that's your version so how did realm and you connect did realm come to you did you audition for the role of audrey ultimately how did you become audrey uh was there an audition process like there is for film and television i mean i'm sure that there are in other podcasts on this one i i honestly want to know the answer to that question myself because <laughs> it seems to me like just one day this treatment concept was kind of in my box and they, they had this and they were going to be recording really quick and would I be interested and you know at first they kind of just they just had me at the word podcast and, and fictionalized podcast and you know and, and a brief synopsis of the two characters I was like yeah sure <laughs> and then and then I, I I read it and then I I, I got distracted with a few other things and then uh, then I just had to get in the recording studio and just Start, start recording. And go for it. So tell our viewers uh, about Audrey. What is your opinion on Audrey? What is her, what motivates her? What keeps her going? She is uh, not a high ranking officer. And that is uh, mentioned in the very first episode. Uh, in fact, she's talking to an officer and he's sort of, he's kind of talking down to her for being low rank, but yet being embedded in the special ops missions. So give us your take on Audrey, what motivates her and what is the driving force behind her? Yeah, I think, you know, Audrey probably struggles with that on a day-to-day -day basis, as you mentioned, which is that she's low ranking, but operates at a high level of import to um, our missions. So, you know, she's, she's kind of, she's, 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 they describe her as, um, she's somebody that you bring in when you take, you need to take out one high level target. Uh, you know, she's not there directing the whole battle or whatever. Yeah. She's very, the, like, the, oh, the, man, that, that, yeah. that, that, when you only have that one shot, you got to take it. She's kind of called in for that. Um, and also, you know, her being a, a female and in a, a highly male driven, uh world it, it i feel like uh, it it hardens her to a point i mean she struggles with i think uh a little depression due to probably 
her failed marriage, um, her insecurity about her own rank uh, and, and her future. And the only thing that really, really drives her and kind of keeps her going is the love of her daughter and wanting to, to be there for her and, and protect her. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's so that's her driving force. Um, but as far as her personality, she's, you know, like how a lot of people imagine people in the military are, they kind of, they, you know, they're wise cracking, they're tough. They don't take any crap from anybody. And if somebody says something to them, they're going to say it right back, you know? So she's kind of got that, but also she's got a sense of humor yep. and, and she has got moments where she can be funny, especially when she tries to go into quote unquote of a spy mode and she's just not really that good at it. <laughs> Do you think she's a little conflicted having to be away from her daughter and that plays into her work as a special ops person? I, I think it does. I mean, I think she has guilt about not being there uh, more often. I believe that also contributed to the deterioration of, of her marriage. Uh, and so, yeah, I think, you know, as, as, as most moms and, and specifically moms in the military they all could tell you that, that that never is that never settles yeah um you know uh the right way uh and yet duty patriotism responsibility those are core dna values of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of soldiers or it takes a special person you it's know it's a special type it's 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 a it's a huge task and it and it does pardon one's uh, personality and the way that they deal with people and, and it can make them seem off-putting now the the, sh the show overleaper carries a very serious somewhat dark tone uh was that always in the plan was that in the script it, it, is that your spin on how you wanted the show to go is that how they wanted you uh to portray audrey how did that all come about but, well, well let I, me correct I, I, the question. Let me correct. I mean, it, it is a dark tone, but there are those wise cracking moments that Audrey lets out. And it adds a little bit of lightness and humor because it does show that Audrey is somewhat of a smart ass as well. Yeah, she is a smart ass. Uh, and I think, you know, her experiences uh, in her career have kind of uh, brought that about in her personality. But I think she always had a little bit of that herself as well. Um, in regards to Audrey, she was more of a, a balance, but she, she was, my approach to her was more about striking a balance between the maternal kind of loving, caring, kind of real mm -hmm. human Audrey versus her kind of um, trained, hardened kind of uh, military persona. But th th that was one, one thing to address. The other concern was the overleaper, who is Audrey, but for a period of over a year or so I had a completely different set of experiences in being trained by the Subviskins mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, and in her world she loses her daughter witnesses her daughter's death and that um, sets off a series of, of her discovering things and and kind of turning against the U.S. Mm -hmm. and, and and seeking revenge uh, through a, a combined uh, mission the, that the Sovietskins have of killing the president, assassinating the president of the United States. Yep. Uh, so not... she's a completely different person from Audrey to a point. Yeah. Uh, she she's even even harder, even more stoic, even more clinical, even more just like kind of like a personality of a Terminator type. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so yeah. Sort of like a Jason Bourne type, you know, person seeking out revenge for the people that ultimately yeah. changed his personality. Now, Overleaper is the brainchild of Sam Bosch. Uh, did you and Sam have meetings, conversations about Audrey, about the show in general? Uh, no, this came about really, really quick. I mean, I kind of, like I said, these script just kind of appeared in my box. Uh, I I was super excited to explore the fictionalized podcast realm, loved the characters and, and, and in a quick read through the script. And then, but it was like, it felt like, I don't know, a few days later, I was just in the booth and we just had to start knocking it out. You know, some podcasts, you know, they allow the, uh, you know, the talent to record from anywhere. I assume for this, you had to go into a studio, all professional prepped and whatnot, correct? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no prep. You're just reading from a computer screen. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you just you go in and you, you you go right to work. I mean, I I did spend a little time thinking of just about the like some of what we've been discussing about exploring those fundamentals of the the, the nuances and the differences between the overleaper and Audrey, and then the differences between like overleaper speaking in the real time of her experience versus overleaper speaking as narrator. And the same thing with Audrey. So just kind of, and honestly, like being in that booth, the silence in that booth helps you hear yourself so much better than you do when you're just on a set, like acting, interacting normal mm -hmm. with other actors and all of that. You're not thinking about how you sound necessarily. You know, you're, you're thinking more how you're expressing in the moment and how it feels. And where there's a little bit, I mean, you still approach the booth as from an actor's point of view, but it's a different, it's just more internal and it's more like you you have more control to a certain extent over what you're what you're portraying and conveying is it very difficult as an actor uh when you're having conversations that are recorded at two completely separate times and you don't have somebody there to interact with to bounce off with does that make the acting even that much more harder uh, it, well, it's a it's it's a real unknown area, and which that's very scary for an actor. Uh, you know, it's it's an area where you, you just have no idea. Luckily, uh, a number of of actors had already recorded their parts before I came in and 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 started tackling uh, my my two roles. And uh, in light of that, I took advantage and, and listened to a little bit of of certain characters uh, pre records to get an idea of their yeah. vocal quality, their tone, their attitude, all of that to see if I could, you know, just performance match it appropriately. Um, and so that was, that was helpful. Uh, and at the same time, I could feel like, you know, the other, the other talent from realm and, and our, our tech crew, they kind of, if you're not nailing it, I, they, they have ways of helping you out, you know? Cool. That is so cool. Now, uh, Overleaper goes in and out of the sci-fi realm quite a bit. Uh, in the very in the pilot episode that's coming out on Thursday, you know, you're given these orders. You're going to Afghanistan. You don't know why. Do you like the the science fiction aspect of this? Uh, you know, and and making it really, really just a crazy world that the Overleaper lives in. Yeah, it, it was, I, lo I do love the science fiction element, and I'm, anytime somebody wants to pick up this notion of space-time time continuum and parallel universes and all that stuff, like, I'm, I could, let's down, I'm, let's, let's talk for hours about it, you know? But it, <laughs> but it gets super confusing, and it's just like, yeah, it, 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 was, it was fun, but slightly daunting at the same time, just, like, to stay on track of, like, which time and space are you in and how does that even work at all you know um and then as you know you, i love picking up those concepts but then at some point you just gotta like just say what's on the page dude you know you're not gonna understand all the concepts <laughs> now you you have done a wide spectrum of roles uh in your career uh you know when overleaper when it does come time for you to move on to your next role do you take something away from every role that you play and just bring it on to the next role more experience become try to better your acting skills hone them and so on yeah i think uh working in, in this space and in, in, in this model and at this pace teaches you a lot about your own approach to the character and the medium that you're working in. Um, so you learn more and you learn that there's not one way of performing or acting and, 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 and you can always um, adapt or try to adapt and, and, and learn more based on some of these new mediums that, that we're dealing with now. Um, so it's, it's a challenge, it's also an opportunity and it's, it's, it's exciting. I think most actors take away something from a lot of the roles that they that they do. I don't know how much I took away from Gamma, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> you know, from film to television, uh, you've done voiceover and animated uh, uh, works. Uh, of course, you are very widely known as Gamma, Mary, from The Walking Dead, because it's such a hit show. 
Uh, do you feel The Walking Dead opened a lot of doors for you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, I felt like it opened doors and it also was a way for me to reconnect with the, a group of fans that all, I already had from certain other previous um, films I did, such as The Hole and, and some other yeah. slightly more obscure <laughs> horror thrillers. Um, so, but no, but that it just kind of, uh, it's such an iconic show. Oh, yeah. and, and, and it's also, it, it, what I love the most about joining The Walking Dead was that they, you know, it's referred to as the Walking Dead family, and that's for a reason. And yeah. I mean, cast, crew, everybody, like, it's, you're kind of thrown into this hellish shooting uh, environment uh, because they shoot in the summer or outside. Well, they did. In Georgia. Um, outside yeah. in Georgia, right. And, and you're always outside, and it's not a very glamorous no. uh, role, and the conditions are, are quite tough, but that creates a bonding element for the, the cast and, and the crew, and, and also even outside the set, you can run into another actor who maybe was on a season completely different from yours that you never interacted with, didn't have anything to do with, but you'll probably run up to them and give them a hug anyway. Because yeah. like, hey, Walking Dead member, you know? It's like, You're part of the family now. It's a communal thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's nice. It's, it's nice to have a big family like that. I want to thank uh, Thora Birch again. The uh, guys, again, the podcast is called Overleaper. It is premiering this Thursday, May 5th by Realm. Uh, I want to thank Realm for sharing the very first episode. It's fascinating. It's interesting. It's 30-minute episodes. Uh, so you can listen to it and you drive to work, at home, wherever you want. Check it out. It's great. It's storytelling. It's special ops. It's science fiction. It's everything mixed together beautifully. Uh, do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go, Thora? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll probably think of it as soon as I get off this meeting. <laughs> no, I think you covered you covered a lot of it. I'm just excited for the audience to uh, now start listening, and I, I hope they enjoy it. Me too. Thank you so much to Thor. Thank you so much to our audience, those of you who are tuning in live, and those of you who will watch later on. Again, thank you to our guests. Until next time, on behalf of Thora Birch and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Bye, everybody.